Well, the recent atmospheric rivers that swept through the Bay Area had a noticeable impact on our California reservoirs. And in this week's Weather Extra, meteorologist Darren Peck has a look at new ways or a new way to visualize when those reservoirs are at capacity. The series of storms that came through Northern California from late December through early January, that three week period, was so exceptional that we're still kind of wrapping our heads around how to kind of categorize it and contextualize it. Take a look at the map put together from Scripps. You see all the arrows on there? Each one of those arrows is an atmospheric river that hit the coast in that three week period. There are nine arrows on there. One of them in black was at the top of the scale. Remember we categorize atmospheric rivers on a scale from one to five. You get up to exceptional and that's where you're gonna have some real significant hazardous impacts from it. Thankfully that one went just north of the California border. But there are four arrows on there in red. Four of these nine atmospheric rivers were actually categorized as strong. And remember, we started putting these on a scale, or at least the Scripps Institute of Oceanography down in San Diego, started putting atmospheric rivers on a scale several years ago to really kind of wrap our heads around this. So if you can kind of put it on a one to five, you can better prepare for the impacts from it. We had four strong atmospheric rivers come through here. On that end of the scale, when you get four like that in a three-week period, if you look back at the last two winters, the entire, both of the winters combined, we only had three atmospheric rivers reach that strength along the West Coast. Three for both winters in total. Meanwhile, in those three weeks, we had four which was why we had some of the significant impacts that we had come through here. You could see the mark that's left on the landscape in terms of where the heaviest rainfall accumulated. You can, that's where the fire hose was coming in right through the Bay Area. We've got our heaviest rainfall totals there. You can see the scale down here is showing you the percentage of normal water total for the entire water year. And when you start to get into those deep shades of blue, you've either already gotten up to average or you're pretty darn close for the whole year, just from what we've gotten in that period. See the pattern? You can almost visualize how the fire hose came in right through the bay and then another one down here through Big Sur and into the Southern Sierra. We saw those in those funny looking arrows, all nine of them. That's what it looked like on the landscape afterwards. And this chart right here is showing you how we measured the strength of each one of those atmospheric rivers at San Francisco's latitude. So if you take that point right there on the map, this one just kind of gives you that historical perspective of each one of those storms as they came through. They were stronger to start, and then they got a little bit weaker as we went through the remainder of the cycle of them. Here's the impact this had on reservoirs. And this is kind of a unique way of helping us visualize all of the significant reservoirs in California and where we stand now in terms of how much water is being stored in them. Each one of these bars going across represents an individual reservoir. The thicker the bar, the bigger the reservoir. So you can kind of really visualize the biggest. There's Shasta. Underneath it is Oroville. You can kind of see, and this is to scale, by the way. This is the great thing about this visualization. There's Folsom down there. I think a lot of people know Folsom. That's the one right outside Sacramento. And that one's just about that wide. So the farther you go over in blue, the more water's in the reservoir. You see the red lines on here? The red vertical lines, those are showing you what the historical average is for right now. So, you know, we're never going to fill these things to capacity. Everything over here in brown shows you all the empty space still in these reservoirs. And it shows you which ones have more empty space than others, like Trinity Lake, which is still fairly low. Uh, Shasta hasn't quite gotten to historical average yet, but Oroville has and a little above it. Shasta is just, a, it's a bigger watershed. It's taken more time for the water to flow through it. We're likely going to see that total in Shasta climb a bit. The takeaway number on this is the one right up there. 94.9% of average. So if you take all of these, even though some are way below the red mark, some are at it or above it, we average it all out, we're pretty much at average for this time of year in reservoir storage. So that's pretty good news. And then the last takeaway on this in terms of the impacts from this exceptional cycle of storms, you can't just look at water in reservoirs because here in California, we get 30% of our total water from the snowpack in the Sierra. And that is still just sitting there in the mountains. If you just looked at the water in the reservoirs, you'd be leaving out a huge part of the bank account that we have for water in the state right now. So the area in blue going across here shows you what average would be for those reservoirs. And we were just looking at that on that last graph. And there's where the reservoirs are right now. They're pretty much, there's your 94.5%. 
This little bulb on top shows you in addition to the water in reservoirs, that's where the snowpack typically peaks on average. That's what an average arc of Sierra snow looks like throughout the year. When you put them all together, actual water we've got plus water content and snowpack, that's where we are right now. So we're well above average for this point in the winter. But here's what's interesting about this. Take it from that line, bring it across to the top right there. So if you take all the water in the reservoirs we've got right now, plus all of the water that we're storing in that snowpack in the Sierra, at this point right now, thanks to that exceptional series of atmospheric rivers that came into California, we are right now at average for the entire winter. That's a really good story. Uh, it doesn't mean we're necessarily going to stay there, because if we didn't get any major storms, we could lose some of that snowpack and the number would go down. It, it, we wouldn't necessarily still be there by April 1st. It's nice that we're there now. And if we can just get some modest storms, we can likely stay there or maybe even go a little above it. That's what an exceptional series of atmospheric rivers can do in terms of giving us a much needed head start on the water year. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in soon with another one.